Hello there and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. Today I'm sharing with you what Lila has named the magic inking technique. The reason she calls it this is because your image doesn't show up until you apply ink over it. Now this is a great technique that works with stamps and stencils and you can use it with distress inks or dye inks. So I have lots of examples for you today. And this video is all about creating a bunch of backgrounds. I feel like the more examples we do, the better you'll see how much you can do with the magic inking technique and little variations of it. Then my next video, that's in a couple days, will show you the cards that I make with these backgrounds and some heat embossing techniques. So a lot to learn, so I broke it up into two videos. By the way, many of the products I'll be using today and sneak peek for the next video are from a new Simon Says Stamp release. I'll have the link for that below in my on the top of my supplies list. So if you want to see those, you can, but you can use any stamps and stencils for this. Okay, let's get started by doing the basics of this technique. Then I have lots of examples. To start basic, I'm using a background stamp and I chose one that has a little bit of solid area and a little bit of outline area. And it's this new beautiful spring flowers background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. I just love it. I will be stamping this onto a smooth white cardstock. You could use any white cardstock, but smooth is always best for ink blending. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White and 110 pound. I do have that linked below. I will also be using two basic inks for this technique. One is a white pigment ink, and I chose to use the Ink on 3 white pigment ink. It's called Shark Tooth. You could use any white pigment ink, Hero Arts, Unicorn White Pigment Ink, Simon Says Stamp, any good white pigment ink will work. I will also be using Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, a clear embossing ink that many people use for heat embossing. Any embossing ink would work. I just happen to use Versamark and have for years. I do recommend a good white pigment ink and a good embossing ink for any stamper. These are basic inks and work great for this magic inking technique. So on this white cardstock, I have already stamped on the left piece, the background stamp with white pigment ink. On the right piece, I've stamped the background stamp with Versamark ink. And I'll demonstrate the technique with both throughout this video. The results are a little bit different, but both work great for the technique. Now I've stamped this one with white pigment ink. You can kind of see the image there, but very little. On the other one, I've stamped with Versamark ink and you can barely see it at all because it's a clear ink. Keep in mind, these are both a type of pigment ink. So that ink kind of sits on top of the paper and doesn't dry right away. I recommend for this technique that you let your white pigment ink and your Versamark ink completely dry before you do your inking on top. You can either do this by letting it sit for overnight or heat set it really well, which is what I chose to do. The more dry this ink is, the better the technique will work and you won't smear your ink. Also, a way to kind of tell if your white pigment ink is dry is tilt it in the light. If it looks a little shiny, that means it's still wet. Okay, so let's start with our background where we stamped the spring flowers with Versamark ink, that clear sticky ink. So we're starting with a piece of white cardstock where you can't see the image. However, when we apply ink over it, you will see the image. So the ink that I chose to use for most of today's examples is the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is just a great form of a dye ink that when you apply it, it blends nicely. But any dye ink will work here. I'm using my Tim Holtz Ink Blending Tool and the new domed foam, which allows you to apply ink very evenly. I absolutely love it. So I'm applying some peacock feathers, some lucky clover, and then I end up doing a little twisted citron and blueprint sketch. I'm applying the ink over this with a medium application, not super light, not super heavy. And what happens is that stamped image in Versamark ink kind of resists the ink we put on top and you can see it. It's not a perfect resist. If you want a perfect resist, you should use glossy paper. But this gives like a ghost-like image. And again, it's like magic because you start with what looks like plain white cardstock. But when you apply ink to it, look at your image appears. And it's a great way to create a very soft background. So again, I, that was where I started with Versamark ink stamped image and then applied Distress Ink over it. Such a beautiful soft background. 
Okay, now let's do the same, but this time that background stamp was stamped in white and we dried it completely. When I apply ink over this, you get the same kind of magic where your image all of a sudden appears because the white pigment ink somewhat resists the ink you put on top. Because remember, the white ink and the Versamark ink are pigment inks. It's kind of like a paint ink, that's how I like to think of it, where the ink sits on top of the paper. But the dye inks that we're putting on top absorb into the paper. So the pigment inks that we already put down, that we stamped, is actually resisting the dye ink from absorbing there. And that's why you can see that image. That's just kind of a way to explain it and think of it. But this is a subtle resist technique. And this is a great way to create a background with a little more interest than just doing ink blending, but not too distracting that you can't put a lot on top of it. So now let's do a comparison between the background where we stamped with Versmark and the background where we stamped with white. Now, if you look closely, they look very similar, but the white is a little more defined. So if you try it with Versmark and it's too subtle, then try it instead with the white pigment ink. Again, any white pigment ink would work. If your white pigment ink isn't working, that means it probably needs to be re-inked. Okay, so let's look at some examples with stamping first in Versamark ink and adding ink on top. Now remember, you can use either ink, but I just wanted to show you some differences. Then we will combine the two later on. For this background, I used a new Simon Says Stamp Cling Stamp called the Half Tone Background. Really any background stamp will work. I thought this would be fun because there's bigger dots towards the bottom and smaller dots towards the top. I have already stamped that with Versamark ink and let it dry on the white cardstock. Now over that, I have put a stencil with dots on it. This is the Simons' stamp, I like small dots stencil. I wanted to make different dots, different colors, so I created a mask. This is a piece of scrap cardstock where I die cut a circle that's a little bit bigger than the dot on the stencil. So you can see I can put that mask over the stencil around one of the openings and that mask off the other dots. Now I'm using the new Kitsch Flamingo Light Pink Distress Ink and I'm using the ink blending tool again with the domed foam and I'm applying a medium amount of ink over these openings. You can see that the white pigment ink that we have stamped already with the dot pattern is resisting that ink and you can see the image pop through. Here I'm doing dried, uh, dried marigold then I did a scattered straw, twisted citron, tumbled glass, and then some shaded lilac. And then when you remove it, check this out. You can see that dot pattern that we stamped with the Versamark ink show through our colorful dots. So our white background looks plain, but our colorful dots have tiny little soft dots in it. It's just a nice way to build up your background and add some interest. It's also a great way to use your background stamps with your stencils. Okay, next let's do some examples where we stamp the background stamp with white ink first instead of Versamark ink like we did in the last example. So on this one, I stamped a text background. This is a new one from Simon Says Stamp. It's the Friendship Text. They have several different text backgrounds. I like them all because it's a great way to add a little bit of detail to your background. I stamped that with white pigment ink on white cardstock and let it dry completely. Now I'm putting a stencil over it. This is the new Simons' Stamp Painted Flower Wreath Stencil. I'm using some scraps of masking paper to mask off everything around this large flower so that I can do each element in this stencil in a different color. This is the Kitsch Flamingo again, which I found works really well with this technique. I'm applying a medium to generous amount of this ink. Then I can remove my mask and I can buff off the extra ink and then go to ink another flower. And what happens is the white pigment ink that we stamped with that text background stamp somewhat resists this pink ink that we're putting on top. So you'll be able to see a subtle bit of the text through the color, but you won't really see it on the white background. I will continue to move my mask and change up colors until I ink the whole wreath. The colors I used here are the Kitsch Flamingo, Dried Marigold, cit uh, Twisted Citron, a little bit of mowed Lawn, and some Scattered Straw. This is a great way to use up those little piece of masking paper you may have saved, 
or you could just use some temporary tape instead. Also, I use Distress Ink for most of these examples just because it blends well, but you should be able to use any dye ink with this. But I do recommend using a foam blending tool like this one just to make sure you get a good amount of ink over it so that your stamped image pops through it. That stamped image, you want a lot of ink around it so that it really resists it and it shows through. Now here I had some small dots in the stencil that I wanted to ink up with the scattered straw yellow. So what I did is I took a piece of masking paper and I punched a little hole in it with a circle die. You can see the circle die there at the top. And that just is a quick way to create a mask to mask off all the other flowers around it. So just make sure your circle die is a little bit bigger than your openings and you can see how well that works. This is similar to what we did with the bigger circle opening with that circle stencil I showed you in the last example. Once I've inked over all of the openings of the stencil, we can remove it and check this out. You can see that subtle text showing through the color that we added over the stencil. It's subtle, but it adds a lot of interest to this basic stencil image. Now I will say, and this is important, that if you want that text to be more bold and show up more white, you could either white heat emboss the image first, or you could ink the color over the stencil and then stamp with white pigment ink and the text background stamp on top. The fun of this technique is that magic and that it gives kind of a subtle look for a subtle background. I just really like to find new ways to get new looks using some of our basic supplies, such as white pigment ink, Versamark ink, stamps, and stencils. Now I really like that stencil, so I thought I'd do another example. However, this one has a tad bit more solid area to it than that text background stamp. So I have a piece of white cardstock where I have already stamped the Simon Says Stamp Half Tone Circle Stamp. I've stamped it with white pigment ink, made sure it was completely dry, and now I'm using that wreath stencil over it again, along with Distress Inks and my ink blending tool. Again, I'm applying a medium amount of ink. You'll want to experiment. If you apply too light of an amount of ink, you have something else that happens, a different effect, which I'll show you later. But if you really apply a ton of ink and keep doing it, you actually just really cover up those white dots that are trying to show through. So do a medium application. Again, using a foam applicator like the domed blending brush seems to give the best results, but you can use whatever you have. And check that out. Love that look. Having those dots on the color is so much more interesting than just the color alone. Okay, let's step it up a bit. In this case, I didn't want the background to be white, but instead a light bluish green color, but then have those dots with the flowers showing through. So I started by stamping the Simon Says Stamp Sweet Garden Background Stamp with white pigment ink on white cardstock, and I made sure it was completely dry. Then I thought I'd go with that dot stencil and start inking, but I took the dot stencil off and instead am using a large blending brush to apply a very light amount of cracked pistachio distress ink over the entire background. So over that white pigment ink stamping. This is very subtle. It won't make much difference with the white pigment ink showing through, but it changes our white background and gives it a very soft mint colored background. Then I can put my dot stencil on top and apply a heavier amount of the same ink. That way our dots will have a darker mint color and those white flowers will resist and show through. So I'm applying a pretty generous amount there and then I decided to add some more color. So to some of the dots, I added some Twisted Citron. To others, I added a little bit of Lucky Clover. And to a few others, I added some Peacock Feathers. Just so each dot had a little bit of a different color. Okay, now when we remove this stencil, the area around the dots will be a soft mint color because we applied that very light amount with our blending brush. Then the dots will be a little more bold with the white flower showing through. It's just a fun way to kind of create your own pattern papers using products you have. I really enjoy that process of creating colorful backgrounds and I'm hoping you may too. Okay, now I have a little bit of a different variation of the technique. In this case, we're going to apply a very light amount of ink with a blending brush. 
And what happens is the ink that we've stamped catches that ink. It's kind of opposite of what we did before, but a great way to use this magic inking technique. So I'm starting with white cardstock where I've stamped that friendship text background with white pigment ink and made sure it was completely dry. Now over that, I have put my dot stencil that I've used many times. I also created a little mask with a circle die, but this time I'm applying a super light amount of ink using a blending brush. I feel like a blending brush will let you can control your ink application a little bit more when you want to go light. So by applying a very light amount of dye ink over the openings, what happens is the white pigment ink that we've already stamped catches that ink and actually shows up even more. Now if I applied even more ink, put a heavier amount down with an ink blending tool, then the area around the text would get darker. But in this case, the area around the text is still light because we're applying a light amount of ink. You can use Distress Ink for this particular technique also. However, I wanted to demonstrate that these techniques can be done with other dye inks. I found it worked really well also with Gina K Distress Ink. Either would work fine. So again, I've stamped my background stamp with white pigment ink, let it dry. I've put the dot stencil over it, and now I'm using a blending brush to very lightly apply ink over the openings. The stamped image that we have under there kind of catches the ink and allows it to show through. So this is a light application of ink. And check out the cool background that we get. It's just another fun way you can use the magic inking technique. I really encourage you to try this technique. Try different inks. Try different amounts of inks. Try different inking tools. I think you'll have a lot of fun creating fun, subtle backgrounds with products you have. Okay, now that we've done some background techniques where we first stamped with Versamark ink, and we did some background techniques where we first stamped with white pigment ink, let's try combining the two together. So in these examples, we're layering both white pigment ink and Versamark ink to create a really fun, layered, subtle background. We're also going to combine stencil and stamp. So I have a fresh piece of white cardstock here. Over it, I'm applying a generous amount of Versamark ink using an ink blending tool. So this is that dot stencil. So we're creating dots of Versamark ink on our white background. When we remove the stencil, you won't be able to see it much. That's okay, that's part of the magic. Now on top of that, I am stamping that Spring Blooms background stamp with white pigment ink. So I put it in my Misty. Here I've got my white pigment ink and I'll stamp it on there. I use my Debbie tool, which helps me really press over the entire surface of the Misty. And then I actually repeat the process. I ink it up and stamp it again. I really want a lot of white pigment ink on that cardstock. Then I heat set it, let it dry completely. We want our Versamark ink and our white pigment ink to be completely dry for this subtle resist technique. Once I'm sure that it's completely dry, we can add ink over this. And what's fun is the Versamark ink that we did over the stencil and the white pigment ink we did with our stamp will both resist the ink we put on top, creating a subtle layered look. Okay, so I'm using my domed ink blending tool once again. Along with Distress Ink, you could use any dye ink here. And I'm applying that ink over it. This is Lucky Clover. Now notice when I go towards the left here, I'm getting really light handed. And check this out. You'll end up seeing that that white pigment ink kind of grabs that light amount of ink we're adding. Remember when I showed you that technique earlier? So you can kind of see the stamp showing up, but not the dots over there on the left because I went really light. So you can see the difference between the two, which creates a really cool looking background, right? but I'm gonna add other colors and putting a pretty medium to generous amount of ink down. Here I'm putting some tumbled glass ink towards the center. And then on the other edge, I'm using the speckled egg, which is a newer distress ink color. So those dots were the Versamark ink that resists the color we put on top. The flowers or the spring blooms on the background that's resisting it also is the white pigment ink. So we get this really cool layered look. It kind of looks different when you tilt it in the light. It's such a beautiful, subtle background. 
This is a great way to use any background stamp and any stencil together and your basic inks, your white pigment ink and your verse mark ink together with your dye inks. Techniques like this are the part of the creative process that I enjoy and I hope you will too. Okay, so now let's do another example. I started it the same. I did Versamark ink over the dot stencil on the white cardstock. Then I did white stamping of the spring bloom on top of that. Same as last one, but this time I'm just doing different colors of ink on top, just to show you a variation. This one is Kitsch Flamingo, dried marigold and scattered straws applied on top. So you can really change the look based on the colors you use. I find medium tone colors really work the best for this technique, but try whatever you have. I really like the Kitsch Flamingo and the dried marigold with this particular technique. So you can see our Versamark dot showing through and our white stamped image showing through. They show through a little bit differently, so you get the soft, subtle, layered background. If you are finding your images aren't showing through the colored ink you put on top, it may be time to re-ink your Versamark ink pad or your white pigment ink pad. Let's do another layered example. Again, doing Versamark ink over your stencil and white pigment ink with your stamping, all on top of each other. Now for this one, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Mini Slimline Pattern Stencil Set. I'm really liking the mini slimline card design and I'll be showing that in my next video and these are perfect for it. I chose to use the diagonal stripe stencil and I'm using Versamark ink to apply ink over that stencil onto plain white cardstock. You want to do a generous amount and then when you're done, we'll stamp on top of that using that sweet garden bloom stamp that I showed you earlier. I'm stamping that with white pigment ink on top. Again, I like to stamp that white pigment ink twice to make sure the ink is very generous. If you have a juicy ink pad, you could probably get away with one stamping. So now we have Versamark ink stripes and white pigment ink flowers layered together. I'll dry that completely using my heat gun or making sure it dries overnight. Now I can apply dye ink over this. So this is Distress Ink, the Kitsch Flamingo, and I'll apply that on one end. Then I do some dried marigold and some ab abandoned coral. Folks will ask if you can use Distress Oxide ink for this technique. I don't recommend it. The reason is Distress Oxide has a bit of a pigment property to it. So when you go over the stamping that and stenciling we've already done, it'll just cover it up. You want to use a true dye ink or a traditional Distress ink for the colors you put on top. Then check this out. You can see the subtle stripes in the background and then those white flowers on top and then color over that. It's just a great way to create what looks like a pattern paper, but you did it yourself. There's a lot of enjoyment in doing that. So in this video, I showed you lots of variations of what Lila calls the magic inking technique. It's just a subtle resist that you can do with white pigment ink or Versamark ink on regular white cardstock when you put dye ink or distress ink on top. Now out of that I've created a bunch of backgrounds. My next video, I will turn into cards like the one you see here. With those cards, I'll be showing some fun heat embossing techniques and creative ways to use your embossing powder to create fun looks. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, there are a couple other videos in the middle with similar techniques that may be of interest to you. You can also check out the supplies that I used in the YouTube description below, or you can go to my blog, which is at the top right. I thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.